the walkaway dress, Butterick's most popular pattern, a pattern that was so sought after that Butterick had to shut down a factory and cease production of all other patterns to make sure they could fill the demand for the walkaway dress. The pattern has been reissued throughout the decades and there is even a modern reissue that's available though it hasn't been getting the best reviews. The alleged hype around this pattern was that you could start the dress at breakfast and walk away in it at luncheon, hence the name walk away dress. Are all these claims true? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Today I'm gonna be taking Stephanie Canada's challenge on the walk away dress by Butterick. I should be able to start this at breakfast, hence why I'm in my pajamas, and walk away by lunchtime. So I am going to be doing this on this True Vintage sewing machine that would be age appropriate for the times. And I'm also gonna be busy with my toddlers as well as a full-time stay-at-home mom. So I'll be marking my start and stop times. So I guess this challenge is the housewife edition. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel as well as follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore. And we will get into the video. For my entry to this challenge, I'll be using these two Christmas print fabrics. This will be the inside of the dress and this will be the outside contrasting fabric. And I'll be using red bias tape to bind all of the seams. So let's get to sewing. Because this is a time challenge and the entire pattern was designed to be done quickly, this isn't a very long video because I had to prioritize sewing instead of filming so I could reduce the time spent. It took me about 10 minutes to cut out all the pattern pieces, which was pretty simple seeing there was only three pieces to cut out. And then it took me another 10 minutes to put the marking on the fabric, which I do not show here. I'm not sewing in my room today because I wanted to have another cute aesthetic backdrop. So we're sewing in the kitchen and it makes it easy for me to keep an eye on the kids since they're playing in the living room right beside me. The pattern was really straightforward and easy to sew. I mean, the only seams that really needed to be bind or pinked or finished was the shoulder seams. Everything after that was gonna be covered by the bias tape. So I actually just left those alone because the 5 8 seam allowance is pretty wide anyway. I think what I liked the most about this project was using my machine. I've had this machine for about as long as I've been sewing, but I've never used it until now because I just didn't have the space to have all of my collection available to me. So it was really nice to get this old, beautiful machine going again. The stitches were phenomenal. And of course, it's just a jewel to look at. Like with most vintage machines, this is a straight stitch only machine and there are no markings on the stitch plate. So I had to use a seam guide for it like I did in my past videos. I can't be sure, but if I had to guess, I think this machine was used for quilting or at least free motion quilting because when I first serviced it, the feed dogs were stuck in the down position and the only attachment or accessory that came with it was like a binding foot. So I think this belonged to a quilter. In order to get the feed dogs up again, I just used a lot of sewing machine oil and the warmth of a hairdryer and I kept clicking the lever to make it go up and down and eventually it broke free and it's been working beautifully ever since. The design for this machine was carefully and beautifully thought out. As you can see that it's threaded completely from behind so that way the spool and the thread is not taking away from the beauty of the front of the machine. There's beautiful chrome everywhere, including the light, which you cannot see here. And it has nice markings on the front. It's just all around a beautifully designed and thoughtfully designed machine. It has a two-tone paint job like a classic car, and it has a really nice gloss finish to it. I can tell that the epoxy or whatever it was used to varnish is starting to yellow with age, but in general, fantastic condition compared to some of my other machines, including the ones from the 70s. This sewing machine has a lot of stitch lengths. You can make it shorter and longer, but it also has a reverse feature and you can adjust the feed dogs up and down like I'd mentioned before. I am currently finishing up the dress. So as you can see, it was just a series of darts in the inner part of the dress, stay stitching, which I chose to do, and then now I'm just covering the raw edges. So it was so quick, just straight stitches all the way through, and then I decided to hand sew the hem like I usually do, 
and once I add the enclosures, it was complete. The most time consuming part of this dress was hand sewing the hem and that's because I had to hand sew the circle skirt and do all that pressing to get it just right as well as easing in the skirt. For the sewing portion of the dress, I was stopping and starting in like 10 minute increments unintentionally it just happened to be the case like, I do believe that if I would have sat down with no interruptions and no children I would have been able to get this done in maybe less than two hours my original plan was to do this on the weekend so that Mr. Serena could be bonding with the kids while I took this challenge. However, I had print issues, so it wasn't until the middle of the week that I was able to figure it all out. And by then, I only had a couple days to submit my entry. So forgive my intro earlier. It's the best that I could do with the time that I had. The hem took me so long to make because I realized I didn't like the dress by the time I had to do the hem, so I was dragging the process along. I started at 11.08 and I ended at 11.15 at night. Since I knew that I wasn't fond of this dress by the time I was hemming it, it took me a little while longer because I knew I wasn't gonna wanna wear this dress. The thing with this dress is, is that I love every walkaway dress that I've seen thus far so I went into this with high hopes even though I knew a lot of people did not like the reproduction since I was not sewing the reproduction but a tracing of the original I had a lot of hope for this dress unfortunately to me it looks like a apron and not exactly something that I would want to wear out the pattern art has a woman wearing it with a cute cocktail hat but I don't think I would wear this past my kitchen. In fact, I have no plans on wearing this again. So I am putting it on my dress form so you can get an idea of what it looks like or how to put it on. But also I am wearing a walkaway dress pattern. Um, well, I don't know if it's considered a walkaway dress pattern, but it's pretty much the same concept and it sews up the same way without the bias tape, but looks more dress-like. It's also from Butterick and it was a reproduction. I'll pop on the, the um, pattern number if you guys are interested, but this one looks a lot nicer to me. And here I am showing you a cobbler apron that I made last year. And this is a co full coverage apron with pockets and everything. So you'll get an idea of why it is that I felt like the walkaway dress looked more like a full coverage apron and um, not something I was too fond of. I did alter the fit so I didn't have too many fit issues, um, but overall I just don't think that there is enough tailoring in the dress itself for me. And again, it was such a shame because I did love absolutely everyone else's and so that aided in my excitement because I thought I was gonna love mine as well. I do want to give special thanks to Stephanie Canada for doing this challenge, but also sharing this pattern with us all. I am so thankful. This was so fun to do. I felt like I was a part of a virtual sewing circle and it was an amazing experience. I am so thankful that I had an opportunity to join. I definitely had a lot of fun. Please check out Stephanie Canada's um, page. Follow her on YouTube. I'll leave the link to her channel below. And definitely check out her series on the walkaway dress pattern or all of her series where she compares the true vintage patterns to the um, modern reproduction, which most of them or all of them are actually redrafted patterns. But you should definitely check out that series. It's so interesting. I enjoy it so much. As always, thank you guys for being here and supporting my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well as follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore. Um, if you would like to support me monetarily, you can leave me a virtual tip on my Ko-fi. The link will be in the description box below. That will help out my channel so much, but liking and sharing my content will work wonders as well. I am so grateful for you all and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. So many fun holiday videos and I might have a couple of bonus videos. So maybe twice a week upload and then there might be a third here and there depending on if I come up with uh, more fun videos that I'd like to share. So thank you and see you in the next one. Bye.